today's book is Heather Has Two Cigarettes! Yay! Heather has two cigarettes. What should she do? Should she smoke them herself or share them with you? Yay! That's right, boys and girls. In fact, I have some to share with you now. Yay! Woo Pass them around. Make sure everybody gets one. <laughs> All right, as we celebrate Smokers Pride Month this month, Let's talk about the great people in history who were smokers. We have Abraham Lincoln, who was a smoker. And remember, we learned last week, Michelangelo was a smoker. Very good. Now, we can't forget our President Obama, who is a smoker. Great. Now, what do you want to be when you grow up? Smokers! Very good. Wait a minute, Sarah, you didn't answer. Why didn't you respond? Actually, I'm a non-smoker. <gasps> You're a smokerphobe! My mom told me smoking is bad for you. That's hate speech. That's right. Any more intolerance from you, young lady, and you'll be going back to the principal's office and diversity training. Tomorrow's book? Daddy's roommate has lung cancer. Uh, the New England Journal of Medicine did a study on smoking that said if you smoke tobacco, you run the risk of losing seven years off your life. What is society's rational response to that kind of medical research? Well, society even goes so far as to discriminate against smokers. Tell them where they can and cannot smoke. Uh, discourages people from ever starting. Encourages people who've already started to stop. They spend hundreds of millions of our tax dollars running public service ads trying to tell people to stop smoking. Oxford University's International Journal of Epidemiology says for college-age men who engage in homosexual behavior, they risk losing eight to 20 years of their life. That's up to three times more years of life put at risk by engaging in homosexual behavior as smoking tobacco. So how does society respond to that? Do they respond rationally or do they respond with political correctness? And actually want to pass laws to protect that behavior, to encourage it, to put it up on a pedestal in the culture and Hollywood media. Various homosexual activist groups have admitted, like the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association. There are increased health hazards to lesbians as well, including some types of cancer. Uh, incidences of HIV, AIDS, and STDs. Uh, and so, while the most severe health consequences seem to be associated with homosexual behavior among men, there are also health hazards uh, involved in the lesbian lifestyle, including a reduction in lifespan. So I mean, if you really care and love somebody, you don't want them to be involved in behavior that's going to make them die earlier. Uh, if you love them, you want them to stick around. So you would be encouraging them to get out of that lifestyle. Homosexual activists are inconsistent on this point. Sometimes they claim that people involved in that lifestyle were born that way, even though there's not a shred of scientific evidence to, to document that claim. But then on other occasions, they'll say that so-called sexual orientation is fluid and can change on on a spectrum throughout somebody's lifetime. So for example, you had Anne Hecht, who was uh, involved in a very prominent relationship with, uh, with Ellen DeGeneres. Suddenly fell in love with a guy, got married, had children. If they knew the facts about the severe health hazards of this type of behavior, I think people would be more alarmed uh, than they are today to know that their children are being taught in school that this is a healthy and safe alternative, a moral and legal and social equivalent to marriage between one man and one woman. True Christian compassion is trying to help people out of self-destructive behavior, not trying to prove to them how loving and tolerant you are by enabling self-destructive behavior.